What we're going to be going over here is the production budget. And we'll look at how we set up this production budget. So looking at our diagram here for budgets, we start out with our master budget. And then under our master budget, we have the operating budget or the financial budget. So uh, just for our financial budget, just as a point of interest, it includes our cash budget, our capital budget, and also the balance sheet budget. But uh, for our production budget, that falls under the operating budget. So under our operating budget, the first budget we have to develop is our sales budget. And then once we know our sales budget, then we can uh, determine our production budget. And really a production budget is just the number of units that we're going to have to produce. So uh, knowing our production budget, then we can determine a direct materials budget, direct labor budget, and factory overhead budget. And then we uh, have our invent our we have to know our ending inventories that are flowing out from our our production here, and then they go into the cost of goods sold for the units that we sell, and then our cost of goods sold goes into our income statement. Okay, and then we do have that selling and administration exp uh, budget here under our sales budget, or branching out from our sales budget. Okay, so let's look at this production budget. Okay, so this is really the second budget that we're uh, developing or uh, coming up with here when we're uh, for our operating budget. So what we're doing here is all we have to do is the, determine the units that have to be produced for the period here. So what we do is we start out with the budgeted unit sales here from our sales budget. So we have to know what our uh, sales budget has for the units that we have to produce for the period here. Okay, so that we have to get from our sales budget. Ha sales budget has to be developed first here. Okay, then uh, knowing our budgeted units of sales here, then we what we would do is we'd add to it our desired ending finished goods budget that we have here, whatever we have in ending finished goods. And then we would also be subtracting the beginning finished goods uh, fr from our units that have to be produced here. So uh, we're dealing with our finished goods budget here and our sales budget and based on what we have what we know we have to have here based on our desired ending finished goods and what we have in our beginning finished goods and the budgeted unit sales then we can determine the units that have to be produced okay so we'll go through an example here looking at the production budget to determine how many units that we have to produce Okay, now for calculating our production budget, and remember those are based on forecasted budgeted estimates, and we'll be looking at it in terms of a single product here, but you'd have to go through this procedure for all the products that you're producing, and we'll also look at it in terms of a single month here, but you'd have to go through it for all the months of the years here. So we start with our unit sales, and that comes from our sales budget here, and we're going to be looking at Mar uh, the month of March here where we have uh, 11,000 unit sales that uh, the sales department is forecasting here, so we're going to have to produce those for the month of March here, and then we'll also be looking at uh, the month, month of April here, the next month here, where we're going to have 12,000 unit sales that the sales department says they're going to sell, so we're going to have to produce those here and for, uh, for April. And the other thing is here, we have to know our desired ending inventories, and they were based on here 10% of the next period's material needs for direct material, and then 5% of the next period's sales for finished goods. But we're dealing with finished goods here when we have to determine our total uh, production units here. And this, remember here, our desired ending inventory is usually based on the next period's sales budget here. So we started, we're going to be looking at March or March here for the month of March, but our desired ending inventory has to be for the month of April here, the next month. Okay, so going down to our production budget here. So again, for our, go over that again here, the units that have to be produced, that equals our budgeted unit sales here that we have from our sales department and we'd be, and then we'd have to add to that here the desired ending finished goods that we'd be looking at and then we would be subtracting from that the beginning finished goods and that would give us our total units that we have to produce okay so for going over looking at the month of March here that 3-1 period here for a production budget we start out with our unit sales that we need here for the, the month of uh, March here of 11,000 here from the sales department. Then we'd have to add to it our desired ending finished goods that we want. And that has that's based on our April month, month of April here. And then remember, we needed 5% of the uh, 
of the next period's finished goods here. So uh, we would have for the month of April, we had 12,000 units here of production. 5% of that is going to give us 600 units. And then we'd be subtracting from that our beginning finished goods that we have. And that would be based on our March date here. Again, 5% of the uh, inventory here times 11,000 units. That's our uh, production that we need here for March. And that gives us 550 units. So subtracting that from our totals up here, we're going to end up with the units that we have to produce here for March is 11,000 50 units. Okay, so that's basically how you go through this to determine the number of units that you have to produce. So just to review it here once more, you go to your production budget and just say the units that have to be produced really equals the budgeted unit sales for the period that you're looking at. And then you'd have to add to that the desired ending finished goods you want for that particular period. And then you would be subtracting from that the beginning finished goods. And that should give you the total units that you have to produce for the particular period you're looking at. Okay, so for our production budget, all we were looking for is that units that have to be produced for a particular period.